Hey, Mr. Dietrich, uh, more chemistry cool stuff. Today, though, start off with best birthday gift. Mine's a no brainer because two years, two years ago on my birthday, my baby daughter was born, so. Oh, nice. And I was thinking something much, much more tangible as a kid, maybe 13, 12 years old, bicycle. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's a bicycle, 10 speed, the old 10 speed. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that. So today, folks, we're going to talk about sig fig calculations. That's so we learned about how to count sig figs in the last video. Today, we learned how to do it with calculations. Mr. Dean, take it away. Well, probably the best the best thing to start with is let's do an example of why we care about accuracy and significant figures. So let's pretend that uh, Mr. Bergman and I were going on a fishing trip, and uh, I've been watching a lot of ESPN, um, you know, two at three in the morning and they have these fishing competitions. And let's pretend our fishing competition is simply this. We add, we have two people fishing and we're against all a bunch of other people. Uh, we add our two fishes together, fishies, fishes is, uh, together, and whatever our combined mass is, that's our total, right? So I have a very old school, uh, you know those little hooks that you, that you put the fish onto and it pulls down a spring? So let's say I do mine on that little hooks thing and when you measure it out, my fish weighs 1.2 kilograms. And of course, for me, I caught a bigger fish because I'm awesome. And I went and I bought one of those fancy electronic balances that we've seen in our lab, and mine weighed 12.235 uh, kilograms. Clearly. Now, if we were going to add up both of those together, let's add them together. We line up the twelve point two three five and one point two. Now I can do that. My head five three four one three thirteen point four three five grams. That, well, if I got my calculator out, right? Get the calculator out. That's what it would tell me the answer is. But that's really not the answer, is it? Yeah, if we were to submit that as our total to the judges, they'd be like liars. And here's why: What have we assumed, Mr. Bergman, are is behind the one point five to get that number? So uh, it would, well, we don't know what these numbers are. We're, we're making an assumption they were zeros, but we don't know that they're zeros because your scale sucked. <laughs> yeah, my scale didn't have those. So if, if I record that number down below, the reality yeah. is that we didn't record that. That's a lie. Right, so, right. So what we have to do, folks, is that we, we have to round to the most or the least accurate measurement. And so if you look, the, the poor measuring device that we had here, you're gonna round the least accurate measurement. So all we can say is 13.4 because the three and the five, they mean nothing. So by the way, if this had been a five, right, you would round the four up to a five, right? Because if this is something higher or six or a seven or something like that. So that leads us really to the first, if you will, rule when you add and subtract significant figures. So that has to do with addition and subtraction. What would you say, Mr. D, what's the rule? So for adding and subtracting, the rule is line up and count columns. And probably the best way to do this is by doing another example, yeah? Okay, yeah, yeah, let's do one. So let's try 14.07 uh, mm -hmm. plus 0 0.106. 0 0.716? 0 0.106. And you okay. notice what Mr. Bergman did is he lined up the decimal places, which is the first thing you have to do every time you do the math. Then what you're going to do is you're going to just do the regular math. So add up everything first. 14.176. And then what he's, he's done already is this. You're going to count columns going from the left-hand side to the right, and we're going to see which columns have numbers, significant figures in both. And we're going to – notice he wrote the number to the, uh, the line. We call it the line O death to the right-hand side of the last column that has significant figures in both. So if you take a look, you see how the, um, the, the one and the zero match up with the zero and the seven up above. So yeah. right after the seven and the zero, you have to put the line of death, which means only the numbers to the, the left-hand side of that uh, count. But there is something else here, and, and Mr. Bergman mentioned it last time. See the number next to the line of death, that, that six? It's going to be dead. We're not going to. We're not going to be able to write it. But we're not. But it did round the seven up to the eight. Yeah, so yeah. So because if it, the, above, it's going to round it. Up. But now that was add and subtract. What about multiply divide? Multiply and dividing is, is actually way way easier um, because there's only one word we have to worry about, and that is least. Least what? Least number of significant figures. So whenever you're multiplying or dividing 
two numbers. Whatever number has the least number of significant figures, that's how many you're going to put in your answer. So, All right, so let's, here's let's, a, let's do it. Okay, what example would you want to have? Now let's go 721 times 12. All right, so I've got my trusty dusty calculator out here. 721 times 12, and I get that equal to 8,652. So if we take a look at this here, how many significant figures do we have in the first number that we looked at? Well, uh, there's no non-zero digits, so that's three. Same on this one, this would be two because there's no non-zero digits. So least, that means I need to round this to two significant digits. But I've got four digits. How in the world am I going to do that? Uh, that's, where it, that's where it becomes a little bit crazier. So what we do is we count from the left two spaces over. So we go eight, six, and then we draw a line of death after that. Mm -hmm. Now, what that means is that the numbers to the right... Don't can, count. But, but I can't say it's 86, because if I say 86, or actually, I guess five would round, I could say 87, but 87 is even close to 8,652. How do and, I write that out? And you're absolutely right. And this is where this is where we have to use placeholders. So placeholders, they mark where numbers once were, but we just don't know what they are, because we don't have the accuracy. So in this case here, 87 is not the same as 8,650, but if we wrote 8,700, that would... So what so this is the trick, folks. When you do 8,700, you see this is important. 8,700, this is because we now have, this was a sucky number. So we have to round only to two digits. So the, all you can say, it's around 8,700. It's not 8,650. Don't always believe what's on your calculator. You have another example? Yeah, let's try another one. Let's go 34.5. 34.5 or 3.45? 34.5 uh -huh. times 3.1. Okay, we've got three digits here and two digits here. So uh, let me get the 34.5. Oh, you know the answer? What does that come out to be on the calculator? 106.95. Okay. So start counting from the left, and we're only allowed to have how many significant figures in this case? Two. two. So sure. boom, right here. If you wrote the answer out, we're only allowed to have two significant figures. We'll just say 110 because the six rounds up to, to uh, zero, and that's gonna be strange. Th that has two significant digits, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, is division any differently? How would you do a division problem? Well, the only, the, the division is exactly the same, but let, can I come back to that just oh. for a second? The yeah. only way you could do that is by doing uh, scientific notation. So you wouldn't have oh. to worry about trailing zeros at all. If you take that decimal place that you had uh, in the original number, so the 106.95, yeah. slide the decimal place over two places to the left, well, I only have one place. Yeah, two places left. Okay. And then you'd end up with 1.0695. So write the whole number out. Oh. Wouldn't mind. Just so we can show how we get that. And then what we can do is we can just cut the line off after the two significant figures, and we wouldn't have to worry about doing with uh, placeholders or anything like that. But I wouldn't. Um... I wouldn't use 1.1 times 10 to the 1. I would never write a number like that. I mean, unless it was like a big exponent. I'm not going to do it that way, I don't think. I mean, if I had a big number, the only time we'd ever really want to use scientific notation, unless you've got a super big number or a super small number, which does happen, of course. Yeah, that, 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 um, that is correct. It should be times 10 to the 2, though. Yep, you're right. It's 10 seconds. Mm -hmm, my bad. But you're right. You're absolutely right. There's no reason to do that, but I just want to point an alternate out because yeah, yeah. the numbers, you might have to do it that way. So, folks, let's try one more example. Let's say I've got 55.25 uh, grams, and so this is like a density problem, and I would divide it by uh, 23.0 milliliters. Okay? So this is grams. For, this actually would be a density. So let's take my trusty calculator, and I'll take 55. 0.25 divided by 23.0, and I get this number, 2.402173913. <laughs> I get a big old, big old number. Uh, you can only keep least, right? And so this one right here has four sig figs. This one has three sig figs. So I'm going to go to the third decimal, boom, right here. So it's 2.40. Now there's this two right here, but two is less than five. So the answer is 2.40 grams per milliliter. 
You see, all these numbers, so the more all the story is don't believe your calculator. Your calculator is going to give you a million digits, but we don't know what those digits are because the 23.0s is the best measurement we had in terms of, it's only had three significant digits versus four. Now in class, you're going to be working on doing these on your own, and you'll probably get stuck. It's okay, these can be a little tricky and a little hard, but you'll get this because you guys, well, you're awesome. You're from Houston. What else, right? Uh, and you notice here, he, he, mo he divided grams by milliliters. Uh, we're going to talk about how we, we divide and multiply units because we do the same exact thing for the units that we do with our exponents. Uh, the problem is in that problem is that grams and milliliters are two different units. So there's no way to actually subtract them because that's what we yep. do with units. Um, but we'll talk about that when we do a few more examples later on. We'll see you in class.